a uh, good morning or a good evening or a good afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, I'm uh, Kevin. Uh, today I'm joined by Michael and Jeroen from uh, Masterpiece. Um, it's an NFT marketplace uh, that they uh, created. And we'll have a general discussion on uh, the current state of the NFT market. And uh, Michael and Jeroen, if you can introduce yourself uh, quick a little bit. I can go first. Um, yeah, I'm Jeroen. I'm from uh, Utrecht, where I'm living right now in the Netherlands. Been in the crypto space for a while and uh, yeah, recently started Masterpiece with uh, Michael. So maybe Michael can give a quick intro as well. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, I've also have been uh, on and off uh, following crypto since maybe 2015 or something. Um, and uh, really, you know, got involved, uh, let's say two years ago. Uh, NFT specifically, I think I've been following since uh, maybe December last year. Uh, and I'm, I'm sort of like, uh, have a little bit of an art background or I'm passionate about uh, that aspect of the NFT world. Okay. And I think that's one of the, you know, the, the reasons why we started Masterpiece as well is sort of like to organize uh, and, and make crypto art more accessible. Okay, nice here. Um, yeah, can you also give a like general explanation what Masterpiece does, like what your site tries to accomplish? I mean, I can do that as well. Um, maybe a bit of both. Um, yeah, so we, we like uh, Michael uh, started with the idea to like collect all the art across platforms, and later we, you know, uh, talked about it more about the vision where it could go, and we also uh, built a company around it, you know, Dutch BV uh, limited company, and uh, yeah, basically we're trying to make a data website for NFTs, and our current focus is on the art and collectibles market, which is probably like you know. 80% of, of the current NFT market. Um, but we offer a more like tailored experience where it's like nice to, you know, discover the, the NFTs as well and uh, display the crypto art in a nice way. Um, but yeah, effectively we're like a combination, yeah, of a coin gecko and a one inch. And uh, we're, we're currently exploring, you know, more features that we can offer on the platform as well. Um, yeah, you have anything to add to that, Michael? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that uh, what I find valuable is the idea of creating an experience that uh, is tailored to collecting art, which uh, you know presents the art uh, in a in in the way that it deserves to be presented. Uh, which you know, there is certainly uh, on on marketplaces like OpenSea where you have uh, all NFTs being treated the same way and presented the same way, uh, I think doesn't give you, know, you the ability to, for example, see all works by one artist um, because they might work across different platforms. And I think the, the idea was to uh, approach it from, from a perspective where, uh, it's kind of like uh, in like an artsy.net uh, kind of inspired experience. Yeah, we see uh, like most of the hype around NFTs lately are mostly on profile picture NFTs, so not specifically the art. Uh, like also, the, especially I think this year, like NFTs have gained so much uh, hype around them. But they have actually been uh, around for much longer, right? They already year, I think, since 2018. I think. Uh, yeah, true. Things. I mean, uh, I think OpenSea started in 2018 and uh, Nifty Gateway in 2019. Um, I think Rarible in 2020. And, you know, I think most of the platforms started like end of 2020, you know, and even in 2021. Um, 
so yeah, it has been around for a while, but the industry was just like much smaller. And I think when the you know crypto industry started growing, especially like end of last year, then maybe people see also more the, the value in having NFTs on a chain that's being used for a lot of use cases as well. And before that, people were like way more skeptical if an NFT has any value at all. Um, and back then, maybe the, the right click save was more a meme. And right now, people don't say it as much anymore. I think it's also yeah. worth pointing out that like there, there's artists who've experimented with blockchain art, uh, you know, uh, much longer than that. Like uh, on Namecoin, uh, Namecoin, I think was the, what it was called, right? Like the the DNS chain, in 2014 or something. Kevin McCoy did like a wasn't called an NFT back then but was experimenting with this idea of like uh, tokenized art. So I think that, uh, so the very early experiments are, are, are quite old in crypto terms. Yeah, so like your view is that because uh, the hype around of the um, argument that uh, right click is not, uh, it's not accepted anymore, but we currently yeah, yeah, actually yeah. see value uh, but, I mean, people are still saying it, but uh, I think a bit less than uh, before. Yeah, but uh, like still, we're mostly dependent on uh, marketplaces like OpenSea or Rarible, and that actually store the JPEGs of the NFTs themselves. And yeah, you know, like on chain you have proof that it's yours, but the actual art is still stored on centralized uh, platforms mostly. And of course, you know, currently uh, we saw that there are a few uh, NFTs that are completely on chain. And do you think we will move more like to on chain NFTs because they, people will see like a necessity in it? Or do you think it's like not really necessary to move in that direction? Yeah, my, Michael and I discussed this uh, lady as well because you saw some uh, projects like CryptoPunks where they moved it on chain as well. And you have like projects like uh, R-Wave um, providing that. Maybe like Michael could tell more on, on this subject. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting question. Um, on the one hand, there is, like I think the main concern of course is, you know, whenever you store the image file, off off chain on on some on some server you know it, it might disappear you know in in a year in, in a couple of months whenever uh, the project's running it is is shutting off the server um, and and I think that's on on the one hand it's a legitimate concern but it also doesn't like there's something about you know the idea of the NFT itself being the receipt, uh, you know, it it is it represents uh, the ownership of the art in some in some sense, right? So, what really matters is that people, you know, recognize that the NFT represents the art. Like my point being that if you know a, a people piece, if the URL will stop working, that will not matter because people know that that token represents that image, that piece of art, and they will value it on that basis. And websites like ours or OpenSea, they will just make sure that the image displays correctly. So in, 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 some, in, in that sense, I think people make too much of uh, you know, that idea that, uh, the NFT and the image are separate. I mean, that's just the way it is. Um, but I do think there's something um, about on-chain art that is, you know, beautiful in its own way in the sense that, you know, it really feels more native to, to the chain. Uh, it feels like, you know, it's, it's art specifically created maybe in that environment as opposed to, you know, the NFT just representing ownership over, you know, an image, if, if that makes sense. 
Yeah. Yeah. Also, Michael, you uh, made a NFT project uh, that used uh, Chainlink uh, for buyer uh, VRF, uh, right? About uh, breast cancer awareness. That's like also a project that's only possible on in the NFT space and not in the physical art art world. Can you? Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, I think that's 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 one of the things I, I am excited about is is you know NFTs that do use sort of the capabilities or or engage sort of with the medium of the blockchain. Uh, and yeah, what we that was a project that I did with my wife, uh, who you know she's more the artist, I'm more the uh, the tech person, uh, and it's yeah the idea here was to have an nft uh, that can actually change that's dynamic in, in its representation uh, and uh, basically we use chain link to you know model sort of like the randomness that that exists in real life in terms of like who who might be diagnosed with an illness so in in this case uh, any of those and uh, sort of represent each each NFT represents a, a woman, and uh, they might be diagnosed with breast cancer. They might not be. Um, and the the nice thing about it is that it's really like we don't know, the owners don't know, and no one can decide the outcome. It's just random, right? Um, and yeah, and so and so Chainlink was, you know, really ideal for it because it, it does provide, you know, that that randomness that's that's really key to the concept here, that it's like true randomness that we cannot in, in any way manipulate. Yeah, yeah. So it's like introduce a whole new maybe category of art that wasn't first possible. But, uh like physical pieces. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, so we, is, we have a category yeah. for it as well on the on the website where we uh, list all the dynamic NFT pieces. Yeah, so I guess like dynamic, like doesn't even have to be with random stuff. It can also be like data feeds, maybe for like think weather, for example, you can use. It's also like a whole new possibility for art pieces that uh, like change over time depending on certain variables. Yeah, I, mean, there maybe... like... yeah, no, I, just, wanted to, I just wanted to mention this, for example, one uh, by Terra Zero, I think is the name of the team, uh, which uh, destroys itself if uh, like the temperatures, you know, rise by I think more than two degrees. Uh, so it's basically, yeah, so I mean, th those I think are interesting ideas uh, to, to play with. Yeah. Are there any other features you haven't seen yet in NFT space that you maybe would like to see in the future? Yeah, I think um, I, I, I have seen like much more than I expected, like beginning of this year. I mean, people are really creative also with project loot, you know, which um, is really interesting that people will build other projects on top of, and it's like a really, you know, infinite possibilities of creativity. Um, but as well, yeah, what I, which I haven't seen that much yet, which is not really related to art and collectibles, but it's the ticketing industry where NFTs are like tickets. And you have started seeing, you know, a lot of DJs and artists making NFTs. Um, a lot of those we also have on the site because you know music videos can also be seen as as art. Um, but you already seen that um, some DJs and artists have you know that their collectors can have uh, benefits at a concert that they can go backstage or meet them. And I think it also would be cool if all the event tickets uh, are are an NFT and that people will like collect them because you know you also have when there's like a summer of a lot of festivals in the Netherlands that people collect like this uh, bracelets of like all the festivals. And it's pretty cool if you have those on chain as NFTs and that 
you can prove that you visited certain events and that you can also prove to the DJs or artists that you are you know, a fan of certain music festivals or styles. Um, yeah, and also I think the gaming NFTs have a lot of potential where you have um, you know, certain in-game assets that you can trade across, um, across blockchain games. So you can purchase a certain asset in one game and also send it to the other and use it there. Um, but that's not something that we offer right now. We might in the future, but right now it's mostly our focus is on art and uh, collectibles. I'm not sure if you know like other use cases that you would like to see more, Michael. Um, yeah, I mean, my uh, I, I, I'm not a gamer, but I, I, I do recognize uh, the potential. I think that's an interesting um, interesting application. Um, I mean, I, I used to play Magic the Gathering, uh, so um, I'm, I'm like watching with interest what like Gods Unchained and and, uh, and those uh, kind of projects are doing. Um, but in terms of you know, from from the art point of view. Um, I, I think that there's a, a lot of interesting experiments going on. Uh, also, I mean, like Murad Park and, and others, they play a lot uh, and experiment with like this financial element as well, uh, sort of the economics of the market uh, and intersecting that with, with their artworks. But I, I think that I, I would like to see in general just more art that um, is sort of... Um, you know, thinking about uh, the nature of the blockchain and maybe making the audience uh, think about that on a more conceptual level. Yeah, I think uh, like with like what's possible currently possible uh, on like Ethereum, where where most of the NFTs uh, are uh, are on. Like, I don't know exactly, but I don't think storing big JPEGs is, or even videos is like cheap or even possible to do. Um, oh, true, the, the, the fees are the reason also why other ecosystems started taking off like Solana. And um, I mean, you have seen someone Palm and Polygon as well. But uh, I think that's the, the main reason that other chains started, you know, selling more NFTs as well. I don't, I don't really see uh, a, a future where the NFT, the, like the bigger images of videos themselves are on chain, um, I guess. And I'm, this is sort of, you know, I'm not a blockchain engineer. I know there's a lot of talk about, you know, like state expiry uh, to, to keep the, the chain small. And I'm not sure what capabilities that would open up, but um, I, I think ultimately, um, you know, IPFS uh, is, is a, good, um, a good starting point. And yeah, like I said, I think that um, to some extent, what's the only thing that's important is to, um, not the only thing, but like, as long as, we can keep alive the knowledge of what NFT refers to which image in some way. Um, you know that is uh, that's good enough. And and to some extent, like you know, if if you buy an NFT uh, as a collector, you know maybe you have an interest in in um, making sure that that image is not lost. Uh, like I'm thinking, for example, about one that was sold at Solid Beast that involved like, uh, you know, uh, stuff running on AWS, you know, Robert Alice, um, I think it was called Athena, it involved like a, a whole AI. Um, and Solid Beast basically said that if you buy this NFT, uh, once you're the owner, now it's your responsibility to pay the server bills to to keep those those running in 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 many ways like if you buy a physical piece of art there may also be if it's an installation or something there may also be uh, upkeep costs so i think conceptually um the fact that it's stored off chain is not a deal breaker okay yeah i, I like 
personally, I I would like to see it on chain because then it has like the element that it will be there forever or as long as the chain is up. I think that's yeah. adds a certain value to it. I think I think more projects will you know try to do it, but I think there's also different solutions, and it's not like a must for every project. I think. I mean, there it's just I think uh, you know ultimately. A, a, you know, a, a video that's like um, many hundreds of megabytes large. I, I mean, there are obviously solutions like RV or Filecoin that try to construct separate chains around that, but I, I, I can't see that happening on Ethereum mainnet. Okay. Like besides the like concentration of the NFT space on Ethereum, we also see like most of the trades are done uh on open sea like i think last month it had three billion of uh, value exchanged on it like why do you think there's like actually only one place where basically all the trades are done and why is yeah. it successful like yeah like why all the volume is there um yeah i think you can compare uh, OpenSea to a kind of eBay, you know, marketplace where a lot of the liquidity uh, is there and liquidity is really important because if you want to sell, uh, you know, an avatar NFT or just an, an artwork and you put it on OpenSea, it's most likely you will get the most realistic market price because like a lot of people will see the NFT and bid on it. So you can expect if you list it on OpenSea, you will get like the highest you know, available price that the market is willing to pay for it. Um, what you do see is that Nifty Gateway has uh, their own, you know, primary drops that they collaborate with artists. And um, you do see that those artworks that are bought on Nifty Gateway are also sold on Nifty Gateway secondary market. I mean, people, some people still sell them on OpenSea. Um, but usually like the NFTs that are bought on a different platform, like a big portion of it is sold on that platform. I, I, I know Super Rare also does, you know, a lot of um, NFTs that are being sold on Super Rare as well, not necessarily on OpenSea. Um, so it, it, it really depends. Like CryptoPunks, for instance, is made by Larva Labs and they have, the, they have their own site where you can, you know, buy and sell them. And you don't pay any fees, you just pay the Ethereum, you know, gas fees. Um, but I think the, the main advantage of OpenSea is that all the liquidity is there and it's really hard for like another secondary marketplace to, um, you know, steal, steal a lot of that volume from their side. I think OpenSea will, you know, lose more dominance over time. And that's also something we bet on with Masterpiece because our data is also more valuable if there if the liquidity is more scattered across a lot of different NFT marketplaces. I mean, Sushi um, is launching uh, their Show You NFT platform soon, and also um, um, BridgeFi uh, um, or SkyBridge Capital just announced that they are going to do an NFT marketplace as well. Um, but that's, I think, a more centralized one. So you do see a lot of, you know, new players in the space. Also, 888, the new world, they're going to build on the on the Flare blockchain. Um, you know, Solana obviously are, are building some, you know, new marketplaces as well. So I do think that a lot of people are, are trying to, you know, get some volume, from some of the volume that OpenSea is uh, generating. But of course, they have a big advantage of having all the liquidity there. Um, but I, I think websites that offer more tailored experience for specific niches like art, gaming, um, you know, collectibles will probably see more traction because OpenSea doesn't really differentiate between a domain name, uh, you know, land in the metaverse or, you know, art in general. So I think that's the only weak point of OpenSea is that they don't really, you know, specialize on certain niches and yeah. Maybe like, I don't know what your thoughts are on this, Michael. Oh, Michael, you're, I'm you're muted. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I think that's right. I mean, I, I think that uh, every community um, 
you know, sort of organizers around one marketplace. You can see that, for example, with the CryptoPunks, right? Like you can wrap them and, and trade them in OpenSea, but it very rarely happens. They're mostly traded on on, on Larva Labs' marketplace um, because, you know, you, you want to go to, you know, the place where the buyers are. And, and I think it makes sense for, for, for each community to, you know, group around like one place. Yeah, so what you two are like mostly concentrating on art and I, like I checked out your website and it's a completely different uh, uh, user experience than what you see in OpenSea. In OpenSea you immediately get bombarded with floor price and price history and it's uh, and also mostly profile pictures NFTs, uh, which are currently really hyped. Um, like that's true, and even though there's not a lot of like really original ones coming out right now, I do think that it's a good thing that they uh, attracted a lot of people to the NFT space because you know also one reason why NFTs really took off is because CryptoPunks and board apes were rising in price and a lot of you know, new people coming in the NFT space, celebrities using them as profile pictures. Um, it doesn't mean that, you know, every project is not a rich or bad, but of course, you know, when one, once something rises really fast, there's always, you know, some copycat projects that want to, you know, take some, uh, some profit from, the, from that uh, mania. But uh, yeah, I think overall, it's not a bad thing, the, the avatar trend. Yeah, do you think it's like uh, just a phase the NFT market is going through? Like, do you think it's sustainable that we currently see like new projects basically every day and then getting like so much price action on it? And then, uh... no, I don't, I don't, I don't think uh, it will be sustainable in the short term. I do think the NFT market will be way, way bigger than it was even in August with like 3 billion volume on OpenSea because eventually a lot more, you know, digital objects will be on chain and will have an NFT representing it. Um, it's kind of like the internet of goods that's being built and NFTs are just a way to monetize it. So I think, you know, long-term it will be more and more things that will be NFTs and the uh, the volume and also the market share of NFTs will be much higher. You know, the, the total crypto market cap is around 2 trillion right now. Uh, I do believe that we're heading to, you know, a total crypto market cap of 10 trillion within the next 10 years, you know, probably even 20 trillion. Um, and I think NFTs will like be a big percentage of that. I think right now, the NFT market is just, you know, one or two percent of the total crypto market, which is two trillion. So that's really still really small. I mean, if you look at Bitcoin, also people call it like a collectible or a pet rock, right? Because some people argue that like other communities like Solana or, or Ethereum innovate more. Um, you know, I, I do see the purpose of Bitcoin being money, and I really believe in Bitcoin. But I do, I do think that NFTs have a lot of space to to grow with, like the capital that's inside the crypto market. Um, so yeah, I think I think short term is not really sustainable, but long term definitely. And um, I also saw that like Amo uh, answered some questions. You want to do those now or shall I uh, show uh, a part of the Masterpiece website as well on the screen share? Uh, yeah, maybe you can uh, first do a showcase of your uh, website, that's fine. Yeah, sure. Um, I, can, I can just keep it short. You know, uh, probably uh, some of you guys already, uh, already have seen it. Um, but yeah, I can just give a small overview of what we have built. Um, you know, we have this homepage where you can see different NFTs that are uh, featured and different, you know, trending artists. Um, 
we also have a just sold section where you can see you know which nfts have been selling recently and for what price and uh, all the platforms that we support you can click on those as well um yeah just minted where you can see what has been minted on chain and the uh, noteworthy sales list which is basically you know overview of the the top sales in nfts um yeah we also have a menu here with like different uh, categories which we made and uh, the platforms and you can also find artists on you know different metrics um yeah dynamic nfts is something we talked about so we have a collection here of different dynamic nfts um our async art is kind of the leader in that but this is also a very cool piece that changes based on season so when when it's autumn then the the nft will also change um yeah, and if there's any questions related to the platform please feel free to also ask them in the chat and i'll i'll answer them um and yeah if, like we have uh, all the platforms here um you know like foundation where you can see the the volume over time you saw this big spike you know in early this year it kind of came back right now but you you will see that like platforms like OpenSea, uh their volume came back much much higher um you can see like clearly that here it has been peaking very very high and this is basically only the nfts that have been minted on OpenSea, so not the secondary volume um yeah we also have a you know crypto uh, platform comparison page where you can see you know the, the volumes of different platforms and our blogs is one of our uh, you know better pages um you know michael is a big fan of our blogs so he uh, made a lot of features uh, for this page so you can see the the curated content the playground factory and other stuff um and the recent sales You can also filter on uh, you know the top sales in the last 30 days for instance like this one sold 19 days ago uh three arrows capital who is also you know big DeFi fund they bought this ringers and it's called the goose because you can see a goose here um but that's one of the most popular art blocks collections together with fidenza which is also selling for really high prices um yeah there's also uh this one that sold three days ago is also from the same creator as as, uh, as Ringers. But yeah, especially art blocks really took off uh, this summer. Their volume went basically like 30x or something in two months. And you can see that right now the volume kind of fell back down again. I mean, this is not prices, it's volume. So it's hard to tell. I mean, for some, the floor price also dropped, but uh, yeah, this is the, the volume chart. And then you can also see the, the ranking uh, between different projects. Um, yeah, we have the same for Eflook Art, which is also a generative art uh, platform. You can also see the different uh, projects and the, the chart. You know, Eflook Art also did pretty well over the last uh, few weeks. Uh, yeah, the noteworthy sales list where we, you know, have a list of all the high sales and nfts these are mostly one edition nfts so it's only like one nft selling it's not that they have multiple editions um yeah there's some pretty cool ones in here also don diablo dj made an nft and that sold war for like 900k um yeah there's also a special one it's a photograph from a project where um, he made like 100 photos of twins in honor of his own twin that passed away. And those have been really popular in like the photography uh, category. We have also some memes selling for high prices, like the Charlie bit my finger that sold for like 760K. Um, yeah, people did really well, obviously. Um, yeah. And also this one is quite special, like Uniswap. That uh, for their V3 launch, they made a video with a designer and that sold as an NFT as well. And that was sold for around 500K, um, 
pretty cool one. Uh, yeah, we also have all the auction house sales in here that we put in there manually, like you know, Christie's, Sotheby's, Bonhams, Philips. Um, you know, we just keep that up to date. We have the CryptoPunks, of course, but that's uh, that page is not very like much different from the Larva Labs page. But you, you can see this one, for instance, sold for 6.4 million three days ago. Um, yeah, we also have the collector's view, which I uh, forgot to show you for the art blocks uh, page. That's really cool as well, where you can see who the largest holders are in uh, in that collection. So you can see which addresses own how many NFTs, and you can see this for every page for every artwork. And it's pretty useful info for like an investor or collector because. If you know that the wheels are not selling, that's like a good signal. Um, you know, the same as with crypto tokens. So you can actually like click on them as well and then see what kind of art they own besides, you know, the chromie squiggles in this case. So this guy owns like a lot of them. Um, but yeah, you can also type in the search field any address that uh, you know you can view what what the art they own or ENS domains. Um, yeah, so this is an NFT, for instance, with multiple editions that every NFT is the same, but it is multiple edition and, um, you know, 415 editions, but you can see like, you know, all the editions and the details and the, um, current owners. So also the collector's view, like which addresses own how much of them, um, the recent sales. So. The last sale was 11,500 four hours ago. And you can see a valuation chart. And we don't have this with CryptoPunks and, and things like Autoglyphs. We're still working on a model to you know value that better. But with multiple editions, it's much easier because every NFT is the same. With like art blocks or CryptoPunks or even board apes, it's more difficult because there are some board apes selling for you know, the golden ones selling for like 3 million and then the floor price ones are much cheaper. So it's really hard to make a market cap of that collection. Well, for this collection, the market cap is 3.8 million and that's, you know, fairly easy to calculate. Um, yeah, and then we have the my feed. So you can log in like here on the site with your wallet and then you can see, you can follow different artists. Um, and then you can see, you know, the recent sales of those artists. So it's really, you know, th this is one I own, for example. And it's pretty good that you can see, um, you know, the, the sales on that piece and the valuation. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, you also have a feed so you can see all the, the NFTs that they created. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And if you have any uh, questions on the site specifically or, you know, other features you would like to see, uh, you can uh, put it in the chat. Yeah, I saw we had a few questions. Um, not yeah, maybe start with above. I think uh, Amo had two questions. Yeah. Um, shall we start with those? Yeah. Uh, Amo, the question, what would be the trigger for artists to test the waters with NFTs instead of the physical art they are used to? Um, yeah, yeah I, I mean, yeah. I think, yeah, you can do that, Michael. I mean, I think that first of all, it's obviously not necessarily for every artist. Um, you know, I, I think one of the interesting things about NFTs is that it, you know, enables digital artists to sell their work in a way that wasn't possible before. Um, and I know that people have experimented with, like, let's say, uh, you know, selling an, a physical painting as an NFT as well. But I, I don't know if that's necessarily where the strength of an NFT lies. Um, so I think that it's totally okay that, you know, uh, some artists may just you know they work in in in, in different medias in in, in in physical they they create physical works and and maybe um you know they're not interested in doing an nft and that that's okay um i think that there is 
you know, the energy use is uh, obviously a, a cause of concern uh, to some extent, like this narrative around, uh, you know, Ethereum wasting a lot of energy. Um, and in, in general, I think there is, um, you know, a, a need for maybe education or, um, you know, also I think uh, the, the space would benefit from, you know, cultural workers, uh, you know, curators, um, people who discuss the art. Um, I think that there's a sort of a distinct uh, sense as well that, you know, so much of the space is maybe focused on speculation uh, for, for purely financial reasons. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, I think that's, that those are th some of the reasons why, you know, there's maybe, you know, NFTs have a negative reputation, let's say, in, in, in some corners of the art world uh, right now. Yeah, um, because you like see that most of it is speculation and people argue that it's bad for the environment. Do you think there will come regulation to the space and that will have an impact on it? Yeah, I, I do think uh, you will see more regulation because right now, you know, crypto is still very new and, and, and you see more of the SEC in the, in the US, you know, saying that, that, that some crypto tokens might be securities. And I know in the Netherlands, they're quite, you know, pretty strict with crypto and that you have to show if you're withdrawing to your own wallet that exchanges have to prove that that wallet belongs to you. Um, you know, you see well, more, of, more of that. And with NFTs, it's no different because if you buy an NFT on Nifty Gateway and you withdraw it to uh, your own wallet and you then sell it on OpenSea, there's not really a link to know that, you know, that proceeds of that NFT sale, um, like where, where, they, where they come from exactly. I mean, there's probably some people that use NFTs to, you know, or some wash trades or, or money laundering that some people argue, it probably happens to some degree, um, but also in crypto and other asset classes. But I do think we will see more regulation because NFTs are really no different from crypto tokens because you can also self custody them or you can put them in Nifty Gateway or, or, or you know, some centralized platform. Um, but I, I guess it's different because the value is very subjective compared to you know, crypto. There's not like a single value on an exchange where you can liquidate it immediately and have that price. It's really what you know, the, the buyer is willing to pay for it and how he values the NFT piece. But I'm pretty sure that, you know, some people own NFTs that regulation or, or the tax man doesn't know about. So I think they'll definitely chase that more and regulate it, but it will probably take a long time. So, yeah. In the meantime, it will kind of stay uh, the wild west, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I think the same, like the law has always some catching up to do with uh, new uh, innovation, so. No, true. And they can't even catch up with crypto, so let alone NFTs. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we had another question from May. Um, hi, regarding NFTs, these are off-chain, so the media is host on separate surf like websites. Yeah, we already uh, talked about it. It's, uh, some no, of true. The... I, I think, uh, yeah, for some people it might be unclear because you would expect that it is on-chain. But yeah, the reality is that a big portion of the NFT projects have their image external um, on the server um, and not on chain as in on the blockchain itself. Um, and people then argue that if the project is not around anymore, then the image could disappear and you just have a token. Um, but I think, you know, in, in, in like the more, you know, blue chip projects, those will always be maintained and for some like crypto punks it is on chain already and i think you know some might be moving more to on chain and you have pro projects like uh Arweave where um that project will store it permanently on the blockchain for you and link it to that 
um, but I don't know that project very well. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, there will be changes how this will be managed, but it's the reality right now that the big portion is not on chain. But I think it's, for example, instructive to think about CryptoPunks because, I mean, they recently put all their data on chain, but for the longest time it wasn't. And, you know, the only thing that um, the CryptoPunks had on chain was a single hash, right? They had one image file with all the punks in it, and then they created a hash of that and stored it on chain. So you know, at any point, you as long as there was a single copy of that image file around, right? That image file that contained all the punks, you could prove that it is the image file that the punks contract refers to. So you could prove that this image file that you have on your computer or that's stored somewhere on the web is the authentic image file with all the authentic punks. And to some extent, that was perfectly fine because as long as anywhere in the world, any person had a copy of all the punks, you know, you could upload it to the internet wherever you wanted it to be. And anyone could verify for themselves that these are the punks that you own when you own the token. And so the link or the punks actually being on, stored on chain, it's nice, it's an extra benefit because it ensures that you know they really will not disappear. But I think that it would have been unlikely in either case for you know no image of the punks, like all of them being lost. I think that would not have happened. So I think for me, what's interesting is that to some extent, this this link is is not that crucial because the token itself is meaningful, right? That's what we value in the end. We value the ownership of the token. Yeah, yeah, I uh, understand. Okay, another question from Amo. Um, he's asking if, do you think we will see an increase of NFT swaps? So instead of buying and selling, uh, more like trading them, just like Pokemon cards for each other. Well, that's a really interesting question. I, I've been thinking about this a lot, actually, because I do think that there's a huge use case for, you know, I think the next big collectible project for, you know, kids or, you know, that will be digital. So that the next Pokemon card, big hype, it will probably be some digital project where, you know, all of the participants in that collectible game have their own Ethereum wallet or maybe another blockchain, but I guess Ethereum. Um, and that they can interact with each other with their, you know, Ethereum wallets where they can swap the NFT between each other. You know, so one guy has a Charizard and the other one has a um, Blastoise and they want to trade it, that you can just swap it. Uh, or you can say, you know, I want your Blastoise plus one Ether for my Charizard. Um, that type of like swaps. I mean, there's still, there are already projects working on um, swaps, but you know, from NFTs or that you can add some ether to your NFT and trade it for the another. I don't know a lot of the projects specifically, but I know that a lot of, you know, projects are working on that. And as you can see, like recently that there was like Sotheby's was selling 101 board apes in one batch and they sold it for like 24 million. Uh, but that's like a, a batch in one go. And that's more difficult for us to, you know, support on the side. So we're, we're still working on that actually, uh, because that's more like a, a swap or a trade where you have like a lot of NFTs in one go. And it's not like a purchase where someone just trades a few ether for one NFT. Um, so I think we will see it a lot more and especially for like the collectible use case, um, we will see it, you know, way more. And maybe also within gaming where people have certain armor or weapons they want to trade. And it's not always the case that they will go to a marketplace to buy them, but sometimes they just want to trade it and, you know, 
uh, let them their friends use a certain weapon and they want to trade it for their weapon. Um, but yeah, you know, Michael, what's your thoughts on on the swaps and you know the support within masterpiece and whether will you see this more? I'm not sure about that. Um, I personally, uh, you know, I'm I'm I think me personally, I don't see myself doing a lot of swaps. I I can't really. Um, identify with that uh, but i know that people do it um and you know i, I know that even traditional art trading uh, it's not unheard of um that uh people engage in these kinds of transactions so uh i, I can see it being a part of the market sure uh we have another question from uh Javier. He is a congratulation with Masterpiece. Um, as a graphic designer, we have an idea to make a 10,000 digital NFT with avatars, just like CryptoPunks. What would be your suggestion as a next step to run a business of that? And what blockchain would you do it on? Um, yeah, so I do think that um... I was actually talking with Michael today on, on like new NFT projects. And especially if you're doing something like uh, loot or an after project, um, you know, your best bet might be on a different blockchain right now, if you want to like launch it successfully. And the reason why is that on Ethereum, there's, you know, so much after projects already. So especially now the, the volume of the market kind of dropped a bit. I guess it's really hard to get enough people in your Discord and enough followers on Twitter and a lot, a lot you know, enough people aware of your project. And I think the you know really good after project projects also have a lot of benefits behind them. There's like a story, you know, how the images got, you know, what's the origin of the images, what's the story behind the project. Um, Bor you know, Board Ape Yacht Club has a lot of like member benefits. You saw this with like the mutant ape that you could mint a new ape. Um, and I know that, um, you know, CryptoPunk owners, they got airdropped, you know, certain tokens from um, yeah, certain Blackpool DAO. And they also got MeBits for free, one MeBit. Um, so I think, you know, the good avatar projects have a lot of benefits for holding them. So I think that's an important thing to launch it successfully. And I also think that, it's probably harder now because the volume also decreased a bit for, for now, temporarily at least. And um, if you're on like another blockchain, like Solana or Cardano or Polygon maybe, then you probably also get more support from that specific blockchain and projects building there. And I, you know, you can always launch something successfully on Ethereum, but I think if you launch something like an after project, you might have a higher chance of succeeding by doing something, you know, original, providing certain benefits for the holders and maybe doing like a different chain to target a different audience. So I guess those things are important. Okay, and then we have uh, one final question uh, regarding masterpiece. Uh, are you guys planning on showcasing sales and data on different blockchains outside of Ethereum? But yeah, you already showed it that you uh, yeah. you're also showcasing other uh, blockchains, right? Yeah, so we have some uh, support for Palm, which is the, the layer two that uh, Consensus is building. Consensus is like the Ethereum consultancy firm um, where also one of the co-founders of Ethereum is, is working. And they are building Palm as like a company under um, consensus. And they have a layer two that also Damien Hurst, the currency uh, launched on Palm. So we have that specific collection on Masterpiece. You can also see it in the, in the popular section. Uh, so we do have you know, support for some Palm NFTs, but it doesn't mean that every Palm NFT is on the site. We do have some Polygon NFTs as well. Uh, but we still have to like announce it officially and have it like a filter on the website that you can filter for Polygon or filter for Palm and see all of the NFTs. We're still working on that. 
but we are thinking about adding other blockchains as well um, because we know that on some blockchains the ecosystem is still very young and there's not really a good place to trade them as well so we are we are thinking about you know providing uh, solana support as well and that you can also trade them there um, but it's something we're still thinking about uh, but I, we definitely will be adding more over time. The question is, you know, which one and how soon we could launch it. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of interesting other chains that we could do. And probably the first one does, that we will support are Polygon, Palm, you know, fully. And then um, maybe Solana. But, you know, EVM-based chains like Avalanche are also much easier to integrate. So it will take us less development time uh but yeah i know uh, thomas is pretty big fan of the of the solana nfts the solarians i think and other stuff uh yeah so i do, I do think that's interesting but we still have to think about it so. okay uh are there any other features you want to add to masterpiece in the coming uh... like uh, other features uh, yeah, like, are you uh, current? What, what are you currently working on uh, to add? Or yeah, so yeah, we're currently working on like too much stuff. We kind of have to order it a bit uh, more effectively because we have so much ideas every day that we uh, come up with that we want to put in, but we also have like limited time, limited resources, of course. Um, yeah, so I think we um, the, the 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 yeah the full support for. Polygon and Palm are definitely, you know, things that we want to do soon. Uh, you know, we we are thinking about you know some trading capabilities as well for, you know, um, collections like R blocks. So we're still thinking about that. Um, we definitely are right now focused mostly on the data because there's a lot of like parties interested in having accurate uh, NFT data and. We want to be like a reliable place for all this data. So we're still perfecting that and adding more graphs. You know, floor price graph is something we want to add in the near future that you can not only see the floor price, but you can also see the floor price over time. So that's easier to estimate the current state of the market than volume, maybe. I mean, if the volume is dropping, price is usually dropping as well, but it's not always the case. Uh, so if you can see the floor price of crypto punks or our blocks over time that's a nice metric so that's that's something we're working on um yeah what well, more uh i think that the my feed is also pretty cool which we probably add more stuff to maybe where you can uh you know showcase it better uh as well i think the artist profiles right now are are still quite basic we want to add more filters to the artist profiles with maybe like a small bio but also um that they can filter on on different uh, collections or per per NFT platform. Um, yeah, in the search bar, we're probably we're continuously improving as well. That um, you can you can search more effectively. And you have anything to add to that, Michael? Which features we you know really working on want to launch soon? I think you gave a, a, a good overview already. Um, I mean, I think uh, the fact is that we have a lot of data that um, we're not showing yet, we're not displaying yet. So I think that is, uh, I think, one focus um, to, to really um, give more ways to sort of slice and, uh, and browse the data. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't see any more questions. Is there anything else the two of you want to add? Or... Um, oh, it's someone's entering right now. No. Uh, is there any uh, like other stuff on the YouTube uh, stream? Uh, no, no questions on the YouTube stream. No. Okay. Uh, I mean, we discussed quite a bit already, and there were quite some questions that we answered. Um, yeah, I, I don't have anything specifically to add. Uh, you, Michael? No, I mean, I'm, I'm happy that you guys organized this. Uh, and uh, thank you for 
you know, the, the Chainlink team uh, for uh, inviting us. Yeah, no, no, no problem. Uh, we were happy to have you too. Um, yeah, then uh, that's it, I think. And uh, I wish you both good luck with further developing uh, masterpiece. And uh, yeah, I have a few, a few comments, by the way. Um, yeah, if anyone has, you know, questions after this, uh, after this webinar, or people that you know will view this on YouTube maybe later, then uh, you know you can always re reach me at, at Jeroen Hasp on on Twitter. Um, to ask any questions about masterpiece or artist collaborations or other stuff. We're also hiring right now. Uh, we're looking for a designer, some, someone that can do, uh, you know, community and um, maybe also excellent developer as well. So we're currently making a, an about page on the website and also, you know, a career type page with some more info of people that we're looking for. So, um, yeah, you can, you can always reach me uh, on Twitter. And uh, yeah, if you're interested in working with us on Masterpiece, then uh, feel free to reach out. And yeah, you can also reach me at uh, you know, the Masterpiece Twitter as well. Okay, then uh, thanks everyone for joining and thanks everyone for their questions. And um... Yeah, and thanks to the you're doing the mic. That's, uh... Yeah, and to the to Pablo and uh, Kai that just joined, you can uh, reach me on Twitter, and uh, you can also watch the recording on uh, on YouTube. It's uh, streamed there and recorded. Okay. Uh, okay, Kevin, thanks a lot, and uh, yeah, see you maybe at the next uh, meetup. Yeah. Okay. Till next All time. All right. Okay, hey guys, that was great. Thanks Thank everyone. you. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye.